and uh, are going to enjoy uh, New Year's Eve tonight. Um, first of all, first and foremost, always be safe. Have a designated driver. Uh, hopefully, everybody is safe and enjoys themselves tonight. But uh, first and foremost, thank you for being such a big part of our extended note family over the last couple of years, especially in 2018. Um, so uh, amazed at the amount of success that the show has had here in 2018. Just a uh, crazy beyond expectations, as I guess is what I'd like to say, uh, of what's going on here for the podcast. But I thought I would come in today after taking two weeks off. Uh, we expected to get started right on time at 10 o'clock. And you know how computers work when you've not turned your laptop on for about a week. All sorts of updates. All sorts of things here. So I, I, so I apologize for those that tuned in exactly at 10 o'clock Central Standard Time to watch this. We're running a little bit behind, but we're glad to be here. And uh, uh, if you're watching this live on Facebook Live, do me a favor. Let me know you're there. Uh, give me a shout out. Feel free to go ahead and share this across your platform. I'd really, really appreciate it if you have the opportunity to do that. So good morning to Charles Wilson. Good to see you there, bud. Uh Glad that you're joining us th there. Uh, looking forward to seeing you here in a couple weeks here at our fast track training. But anyway, let's get rocking and rolling here in a little bit. Uh, 2018 was just a, an absolutely amazing. Our first full, uh, really our first full year uh, of a podcast from January through December 31st. And the numbers have been absolutely crazy and outstanding. Um, you know, we have had just an amount. I was looking at numbers today and we have had over... 165,000 downloads uh, for 2018, which is a, a pretty good sized number for what we expected. I mean, we continue to um, deliver a lot of content on a pretty regular basis. Uh, good to see everybody out there. But yeah, 165,000 downloads is, is, you know, we try to shoot for 150. We beat that number um, where we went for 100. When I had over 100 reviews, we're at 105 reviews, five star reviews on iTunes. So thank you, those for that are watching. And, and sharing and responding. Uh, good morning, Seth Hayes. Good to see you, bud, as well. Good morning, howdy, howdy. Good morning, Michael. Appreciate it. Good morning, Cody Cox. We've got people from the East Coast to the West Coast joining us, which is awesome. So, but, um, you know, we had a lot of episodes this year. Uh, literally a ton, right at about 200 episodes. Um for 2018, uh, and I, as I, I'm able to, one of the great things, I'm able to literally log into my dashboard and be able to see what the top 10 episodes are. And so I thought I'd share those top 10 episodes with you guys today, talk a little bit about what we have planned for the new year, some of the goals that I've set for myself and the show, as well as along with the, for weclosenotes.com as well for you guys out there. So what do you say we talk about uh, the top 10 episodes here. Um, we've got really one of the great things about uh, seeing us on a regular basis is you never know who's going to actually, what episodes are actually going to really resonate with a lot of people. And I really try hard to make sure that we are delivering good content, great speakers, um, whether it's vendors or investors or people that will add something to your business. I know we often will have uh, sometimes speakers that aren't note investors. We've had a few people that are on that, are on that aren't real estate investors, but I believe they share a lot of great content um, with you or they have something that I believe is important, uh, whether it's mindset or um, something to think about as you're working through your note business. But literally, <laughs> Laura Blunk says something here funny. Can't believe we won't see you again. Uh, till next year. I know I've had people who have been reaching out to me the last week. Are you okay? Are you not doing an episode for the rest of the year? Uh, and I've taken some time to kind of relax a little bit. It's been really nice. Um, I really haven't done much <laughs> to tell you the truth the last two weeks. Um, just kind of just taking it easy. Like I said, getting over being sick. Steph's not feeling so good the last couple of days. So it's been nice with some friends, family in town too as well. So I've really enjoyed the last two weeks to kind of just recharge my batteries for the year. But let's talk about episode, uh, the 10th most downloaded episode. Was episode 306. And this is the episode that featured Tyler Sheff, our buddy um, from the Cashflow Guys podcast. Uh, title of it, obviously, uh, dealt with his mistakes, multifamily and raising capital, Tyler Sheff. Uh, 
came in at four figures in downloads, just right over four, four figures in downloads uh, for 2018. Now, Tyler Schiff's a great buddy of mine, um, also fellow podcaster, learned a lot from him. It's exciting. He came in just over a thousand downloads for the year, which is pretty exciting. Now, if you figure in it, we roughly do about 160. If you figure we did about 100 and yeah, about 100 and somewhere between 100. Our episodes are averaging about a thousand downloads an episode, which is pretty exciting. So, kudos to episode 306, Tyler Schiff. Uh, Tyler has been a, uh, like I said, great friend, great f- a fan, uh, even though I've only met him since last February at Podcast Movement. In, I'm sorry, pa- podcast, PodFest Expo in Orlando and uh, was pretty stoked to spend some time with him. And, and he's really added a lot to our show. I think he's learned a little bit from us and um, we were learning a little bit from him as well. <laughs> so glad to be there. So let's talk about episode number nine, the nine month downloaded episodes. Uh, it was kind of a surprise, actually. Um, number nine, I did not believe, but it, it was actually... Um, I'll share this with you. It's kind of surprising. It was the uh, basically. Whoops, oh, I'm here. I type on my screen here. It was episode three thirty-two. I guess you shouldn't do the drum roll. Yay! But this was kind of so episode three thirty-two. And this one, we talked about what was going on at the Quest Expo and the Dallas Note Mastermind. So that came in uh, at number nine. I was really kind of surprised about that, but it did well, which is great. Um, that was at number nine. And what's funny is most of the time we're not doing any promotions of extra episodes. I'm not doing anything extra. Like I'm not posting up extra episodes and to Facebook and then promoting them or running an ad on specific episodes. Most of it's just from us posting, doing a live leap or a live stream and then sharing across our different platforms, which we've got enough of those, obviously. But um, the thing to keep in mind is a lot of this is, is just people downloading episodes after episodes, which is great for people really taking advantage of the different content and sharing it. So uh, number eight, the most number eight most downloaded episode is a guy that we did back a while back, actually, earlier in the year. Uh, he's, he's also a, a past student. Uh, a very active note investor, uh, but let's bring it up. Number eight is episode 227 uh, with our investor friend, Bob Malecki. And uh, the, top, the specific title is Bob Malecki, Experienced Note Investor, Helping to Be Note Investors. And what's great about Bob, if I remember correctly in that episode, we spoke about Bigger Pockets, what he's doing with his fund up in the Pacific Northwest, what his focus is. Uh, some of his background, you know, Bob's running a fund, started a lot of it with his own IRA money. He's been doing a good job, you know, buying a couple of notes here and there every couple of months, every quarter of their own portfolio and doing some good things. So Bob's a, a good friend, uh, very active on bigger pockets. Uh, and so he was the number eight most downloaded episode of 2018. Number seventh episode um, was no surprise. I actually thought this might actually rank a little higher. Um, because we do such a, a big thing with them, um, is our good, hang on here, drum roll, was episode 230, Bulletproof Due Diligence, uh, go from one to 1,000 notes with Alex Godofsky, our buddy over at Pro Title USA, came in the number seven most downloaded episode, uh, and it was real close. I tell you what, it was really tight. It was close neck to neck with Bob and Alex Sodowski. Alex pulled forward just the last minute as of yesterday. Actually, so we downloaded the episode and put him just above over uh, Bob Malenke. But Alex does a great job. If you don't know uh, who he is, great guy. He wrote uh, Bulletproof Due Diligence, a great book on, you know, reviewing your title, reviewing your collateral files, making sure – Things are things look for to make sure that you've got a bulletproof deal um, when it comes to note investing. Uh, Alex is a great friend. Once again, he's the uh, CEO owner of Pro Title USA as well. So good stuff with him. That was kind of surprising. That might break actually a little higher. Uh, no surprise. Our next one though is somebody that we love who does such a, a big big job for us. 
uh, and for many others, uh, is our good friend. <laughs> so I'm typing this in here. No surprise, top six episode of 2018. It's episode 223, and it's the wonderful Shantae Duffy from Madison Management. Come on. She was the number six most downloaded episode. Um, basically, we just spent time on that episode talking about servicing, talking about boarding, talk, talk about Madison Management, some of the great features that they offer up. And, uh, you know, that's a, a great episode. I highly encourage it. I guess it would be in the top 10. I would I would say top 10 you have to listen to, especially as a note investor, because servicing uh, workouts are such a big, big aspect of our, our business. So definitely really no surprise that it's number six in the most downloaded episodes of 2018. And I know many of those that are watching out there, many of those are listening, whether it's existing students or investors or um, people that are buying notes. If you have anything with mass management, you know that you're going to be happy because Shantae does, does an amazing job over there with boarding and then really working with the different asset managers that you may have on your portfolio. So good kudos to Shantae. And of course, to Kevin Cordell over there, who uh, owns and runs Mass Management as well. All right, number five episodes. Ep number five episodes. This was not a surprise because I had a lot of fun with this one. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you know, the thing to keep in mind with this one is just kind of a fun thing. Um, <laughs> This is episode number five. This is episode 307, the 10 note commandments. Um, kind of cracked me up putting this one together, but I enjoyed it. Like I said, episode 307, 10 things that you need to keep in mind, specifically when you're a note investor. What are the 10 rules that are in stone that you need to focus on? in your note business. The 10 Note Commandments, episode 307. Highly encourage you to listen to that one. It'll definitely, I think it's a favor of many people out there. Um, I think we've gotten several reviews on that one episode alone on Stitcher as well. So that was at number five, episode 307, The 10 Note Commandments. All right. Um, let's see here. Number six here. I'm sorry, not number six. Number four. Is one of our most latest ones that we've had on the show. Uh, just, um, well, I guess it was about about a month ago. W uh, somebody who's come on, but also very, very active in the space. Not so much the residential side, but definitely um, something I've known for a long time. But who also took it upon himself to market his episode uh, is our buddy Sal Buscemi. Um, Episode 343, Commercial Note Investing with Sal Buscemi. Sal's been a good friend for years, known him for a while, um, all over a decade now. It's hard to believe that. But Sal focuses a lot in the commercial notes. He offered a couple great bonuses on being able to download his commercial pitch deck for you to use as a guide when you're pitching to investors on commercial projects. Uh, gave a couple other bonuses away as well, too. So episode 343 is our number four most downloaded episode in 2018. So go out, listen to it. You will enjoy it. So has got a lot of great stuff to share out there. All right. Um, love that. Love that. And what's funny is Sal's like, hey, hold my beer. I'm going to help you market this thing and shared it across the board. Always great with that. Uh, let's see here. Episode number three, most downloaded. I was really surprised about this one, and this is this ranked number three. I was extremely, um, really found that kind of interesting that this would show up as number three, and it's episode three twenty. Actually, was the extra five percent. I was really surprised how far that one actually came as an episode, and and that actually was funny about is how you could do a little bit more each day. You know, three minutes an hour, you know, you figure that comes out to about 72 minutes in a day, okay? Um, you know, it's amazing to see and that actually episode sprung from me speaking at the Dallas uh, REI meetup group hosted by Propelio and Daniel Chadmore and Ryan Harper for my five minutes on stage, turned into an episode and, and was really surprised that people really ran with it. 
They did a great job. Um, downloads. It was a fun episode. Good morning, Brandon Zinger. Yes, happy New Year's to you as well out there. But literally, episode 320, the extra 5% is number three in the most downloads out there for 2018. Now, uh, the second most downloads, not really a surprise, knowing what this individual did and what this individual did with their show. All right. And it's funny because this guy was actually one of our guests, our, our, our co-guest host while I was traveling um, earlier this year on our three-week vacation. Now, it wasn't one of the episodes that he did specifically with another fellow podcaster or fellow guest host at one of our mastermind members out there. Uh, what this guy did is he took his show, his specific individual interview about his note business, and he put it as a link to that show at the bottom of his email signature. With every email he sent out to investors or marketed to his database, this show showed up to his database. So I got to love it that he did a lot of great more marketing, expanded our database as well as expanding his. But big shout out to our buddy uh, out of the Gardenia <laughs> Police Department. Our buddy Eric Hyde, or Torrance Police Department out there. All right. Uh, Eric Hyde, episode 272, Policing Your Note Business. Policing Your Business as a note investor with Eric Hyde came in at the second most downloaded episode for 2018. Um, thanks, Eric, for all that you do. Once again, guys, if you've been on one our show, because we've had a lot of guests on, taking your show and using it to market yourself. Dan, uh, Dan Deppin has done this as well. And, and raise some capital. I know Eric Hyde's raised probably about a half a million dollars from sharing his show and people listening and giving him a phone call. So kudos to Eric. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for helping to market your episode as well uh, out there. So thanks so much for what you do and uh, kudos to what you've got going on in 2019 and all your success in 2018 as well. Happy New Year to everybody else out there. Happy New Year to you, Chris Savanya as well. Brandon, thank you so much for that. Good morning to you as well. Uh, we try to keep delivering good stuff here for everybody in the community. So the number two is Eric Hyde. What's number one? Many people are wondering. What's the number one show for 2011? And this one is actually came surprised heads and tails above. Um, and I, it's funny is we didn't did zero to promote this episode. And occasionally over this last year, we've had some episodes and some days where we go from having like a thousand downloads to literally like three and six thousand downloads, it's kind of very surprising. And this actually stood out was one of the episodes that just got binge listened to like crazy. And so, without further ado, the number one downloaded listened to episode of the Note Closer Show of this year in 2018 is episode. 211, the kiss myth, the keep it simple, stupid, <laughs> or keep it simple, silly, keep it simple, Scott method, uh, the kiss method, uh, kind of surprisingly well over 3000 downloads individually uh, on its own, um, had a really peak. I don't know exactly what happened. We see somebody picked up us up. We had a bunch of people binge listen to the episode along with others out there. And this is one of the episodes that did really, really well. Episode 211, The Kiss Method, uh, which is not one of the most recent ones. It's one of the earlier ones that we did. That would have been number, episode number 61. Um, actually, we filmed it in 2017, but it really got listened to a lot in 2018, which is no surprise. So um, anyway, that was our number one most downloaded episode of 2018, The Kiss Method, which I'm, I'm a big believer. Hey, keep it simple. Give a little extra 5% and go rock on. Surround yourself with really good people. And uh, so those are the top 10 episodes of 2018 that uh, people have downloaded, they've binge listened to. That's off of iTunes and Stitch and all the podcast platforms. That's not including the video downloads. It's a little harder to track that for us across YouTube. But we've had a tremendous amount of downloads. I mean, we're over well over 212, 215,000, 200, yeah, 200. Actually, closer to 225,000 across our other platforms um, and downloads on our podcast, which is great. We've got some big goals for 2019. Happy New Year. 
Dickie Baldwin, our buddy. We're going to have you on the podcast. Hope we'll hear before too long in the next couple of weeks, Dickie. So looking forward to that. Um, a couple of things that we really want to focus on. Obviously, we're going to be continuing to do this four to five times a week. Um, yeah, continue to crank out a lot of content. Um, we're really excited because one of the big goals that we set in stone for ourselves when we first got started, and it really kind of reiterated itself. Oh, just a couple um, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago when we were looking at podcasting numbers out there across the board for people was that very few shows make it outside of 10 episodes. Well, we did that the first two weeks, okay? But very few shows hit that 300 episode mark when it comes to actual podcasts. Very few, less than 1%, like less than 3%, three-tenths of 1% hit it to that level of 300 episodes. And we're not that far away. Thank you, Tim Harridge. Appreciate it, buddy. Happy New Year to you, our buddy up there in the DFW market, but you're awesome yourself. Um, thanks, bud. Um, but one of the things that we want to do to literally hit 300 episodes for the podcast, true podcast episodes, we had 150 episodes before we get rock and roll with the podcast. So we are, um, if you're at 340, 350, something like that means we got about another 150 to do before we hit that specific mark on iTunes. So that's one thing we're looking for. Um, we're going to continue to deliver content followed up by speakers and vendors and things like that um, on a regular basis for what, what what I was really surprised about 2018 is what the podcast actually brought to us. It brought to us students. It brought to us funding. It brought to us some opportunities in, in different platforms and being able to speak other places and things like that. So we're really excited about that. Um, and for those that are sharing this episode, Laura Blunt, Tim, everybody else that's sharing out there, thank you so much for sharing the episode. Um, we continue to believe that this is going to be one of our main focal points over the next couple of years, um, especially with the way the, the market's changing. Anytime you can stay and continue to communicate with your tribe, and everybody's got a tribe. It's just not me. You all have tribes out there, uh, in the good words of Seth Godin. And, and right now, with now New Year's Day being right around the corner here, there's really no excuse for you. The NFL basically season's over. You got the playoffs. Your team didn't make the playoffs. Hey, I guarantee you're not going to be enjoying the playoffs that much. Okay, go Cowboys. They made the playoffs. Um, but that's not going to stop us from continuing to approach 2019 with extra gusto and really deliver some great stuff. We've got some great uh, guests lined up. We've been working on that uh, through some messaging and social media posts and things like that with some of my friends and families out there uh, doing some great things bringing some great content to the podcast show for you guys out there as well. Um, anybody have, uh, for anybody that's listening, anybody that's watching out there, any, I think something that stood out on the podcast that you guys really enjoyed. I know that one of the great things that we did at the last note mastermind, the first part of December was have everybody kind of write out their, their end of January goals, their end of March goals, and then their end of June goals. Their one month, three month and six month goals. Um, go Texans. <laughs> <laughs> they made the playoffs. Good for them. Okay. Uh, what's Julianne to see? Uh, our Chicago police officer, uh, Julianne Caulfield Ferraro says, Happy New Year, everyone. Thanks, Scott, for your content and support. Can't wait for 2019. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, happy birthday, Mr. Elijah White, buddy. What's up, bud? I got a big bottle of Elijah Wood bourbon in my house for you, bud. Uh, one of the things I have to first give a big shout out to is our sponsors and those that have really uh, helped us grow this show. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank Elijah White and Christy White from Survey Social, who've been a regular contributor with our, our marketing Mondays on the third Mondays of the month. We continue to have those this next year as well. I'm excited because I believe they're in the process of starting their own podcast too, so it's just really great to see. Uh, I have to give a big shout out to one of our newest sponsors, uh, Merrill Chandler and Credit Sense. We want to thank them for being on there. They've got another class coming up here, uh, third or fourth weekend of January. And we'll have them on Wednesday. But Merrill's been a big, big friend for years. We're excited to have him on as a sponsor for the show. Uh, Laughlin Associates, our, our friends, Aaron Young, Megan Cole over at Laughlin Associates. Thank you for being a sponsor of the show as well. Um, very, yeah, we do a lot with. Uh, Laughlin Associates, a regular contributor, but it's always nice to have them reciprocate back as well as be sponsored, be a regular contributor to the show too. 
Um, and then, of course, first and foremost, our longest running sponsor, Quest IRA, or now, sorry, Quest Trust Company, uh, Nathan Long, Quincy Long, Nate Hare, all the IRA specialists are there, Ingrid, Anne Marie, Beatrice, Haley, uh, Katie. Uh, I know I'm missing a couple people. Beatrice, uh, just a, a great group of people over there. Ashley Villa, Villa as well. Um, big kudos to the whole Quest Trust team. Uh, you can see over here, they shipped me out for Christmas. A very nice football helmet here. Uh, uh, it will not fit my big melon of a head because it's a small helmet. will not fit my extra large head. But anyway, always nice to see that show. Maybe I should have had them sign it. But anyway, uh, thanks to them. <laughs> <laughs> CJ Hart, do you mean Elijah Craig? LOL. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Elijah Craig Bourbon, my apology uh, for Mr. Elijah White's. But thanks for our sponsors. Um, you know, thank you to our vendors. Thank you for those that are listening to the show on a regular basis. Um, you know, we just, we do, we really work our butts off to try to come up with some great content for you. And if you can think of one word for 2019, somebody posted this. What's your one word in a, in a podcast forum over a couple of days ago? What's your big word for 2019? If there's anything that you are basically, what's the word that's going to identify with you for 2019? And my word for 2019, it's pretty simple. Um, the really, I think many, Many people really believe this, but my big word for 2019, because I'm just like you guys, there's days I have up that are ups and days that are down. Um, I try to overcome my down days by focusing on positives. Uh, when things don't go right, you just stick to it. And very tested this morning with <laughs> logging in and computer wanting to go through updates and reset two or three times uh, to begin with. And then the, uh, the nice agenda I had on the side here in BeLive TV, wasn't there when I logged back in, which is okay. That kind of stuff happens. But my big word for you for 2019 is committed. There's too many times I see people not committed to the game. If you're not committed to what you want to what you want to accomplish in 2019, you're really not going to find the success you have. You may drift. And first and foremost, we all drift. Everybody drifts. I drift out there. Things I get sidetracked with. I have drifted. 2018, like anybody else has. But the idea is you have to be committed to a couple things. One or two things you've got to be committed to and, and focus on that. Um, Brandon's big uh, fo focus is consistency. Awesome. Being consistent in what you're doing. Consistent in your marketing. Consistent in your you know email blast. Consistent in your offerings. Kudos to Laura Blunt. Laura Blunt's closing on a couple... More deals here before the year is out. Chris Savigny, I think, our buddy there uh, from the Good Deeds Net Investing Podcast. We'll have them on uh, here in the next couple of weeks. Kudos to Chris and Gail. But Chris closed, I think, two deals this morning uh, on the last day of the year, which is awesome. Kudos to Chris. The thing that you guys really have to realize more than anything else is, is times are changing. Things are getting faster left and right. And I look at my schedule for the year. And I can literally look through my, my camera here and I have my 12 month calendar right behind me is seeing the things that we have going on. Like I'm excited. I'm extremely excited. I have an international speaking gig, speaking in the Bahamas in a couple of weeks, you know, um, I'm being Vegas in January as well. We're going to be also uh, in Tampa for the new media summit. I'm excited for some of the different things that are going on with our note meetup groups across the country. Um, I'm excited to be going to San Diego in the end of February for the Traffic Conversion Summit for like the sixth or seventh time. I'm excited to be speaking at PodFest Expo in Orlando. Um, just really excited about some things. Excited for our mastermind in April. You know, Steph and I joke about our schedule getting filled up and things like that. But, and I've, I've said this the last couple of years, I'm going to be traveling less and less as best as I can. You know, if it's some of the travel that I'll be taking, obviously, so for fun, but we'll be maximizing um, our travel schedule a little bit more successfully this year. And what I mean by that is if we are traveling out like the Traffic Conversion Summit in San Diego, we'll host 
a meetup meeting one night while we're out there. We'll host a live podcast uh, event while we're out there. And so those are some of the things that I mean in us truly trying to be a little bit more consistent in when we travel, uh, consistent in maximizing our schedule. It may take a little bit more of us juggling a few plates during those events, but I think it'll be a great way for us to connect with you guys, our audience, our extended note family all across the country as 2019 moves on. Um, excited. Uh, Mahir's uh, doing a, uh, so Lee's is starting a Tampa meetup group on February 20th. So we'll be doing that on a Wednesday night somewhere in Tampa um, with everybody out there before I go out to the new media summit where I'm an icon at and speaking again. So what is, what are some of your biggest goals? If you've got a big goal that you really look forward to accomplishing this year, one big goal, I'm not talking about 20 big goals. So if you have 20 goals, I honestly don't think you're going to find success. in what you've got to have is maybe one, two, maybe three goals at the max. You can't list off 20 big things because you're never going to have time to accomplish all of them. And I think you set yourself up for failure at that point. But I think you need to have probably one, two, or three major goals. Okay? Three big goals that you want to accomplish in 2019 and going from there. All right? And one may one may, one may be personal, one may be business, finance, whatever it may be. Okay? And now here, can't wait for February. We're excited about that for the, uh, or uh, sorry, Tampa Bay Nook Closers uh, group. I think you've got one that's kicking off here relatively soon as well too, don't you? Now here in January, an intro meeting. Anyway, make sure to post that link in the, in the comments uh, now here. But um, a couple of things here. One, obviously our health has always been important to me. So I'll continue to be working out with my trainer, Thomas. Actually, when I wrap this up today, I'll be running to the gym here, uh, in-house here, our offices, to meet with him in just a, in a short bit. But um, one of the biggest things is for us is we're tweaking our focus up a little bit. Tweaking our focus and how we kind of raise capital on a couple of things. Um, we're going to do a little bit more so direct marketing to some uh, investors here with our book, our, using the podcast leverage, using some of what we're using here on a regular basis to sh raise capital. That's some of the things that we're doing for it. And I'm not going to share too much of that. I'll share more of that in different episodes throughout the year, but that's going to be one of our major goals. Uh, I believe that we could raise pretty easily somewhere between 10 to 15 million in private capital at very low interest rates. Very low interest rates. That's one of our biggest goals for 2019. Uh, we want to again hit uh, have over 2,000 students for 2019 as well. It's a big thing, um, big big thing for us to do that. And we'd love to uh, max out our um, our fast track sales this year. Fast track students. Uh, we do those. We've got seven or eight of those scheduled for roughly. Six people. We'd love to put 50 people through our fast track training this year. We, I think we came in right at 40 last year based on the numbers, right at, right at 41, 42. I'd like to hit the 50 to 60 mark for this year. So a couple things that we're focused on. Um, let's see here. What's uh, Brandon say here? So Brandon says, okay. So low advice sources of distressed property in South New Jersey market to complete first rehab and sell and seller financing project. Three, get away with wife and family on a cruise for one to two weeks. Okay. Great things. So the cruise, Brandon, do you have that scheduled? Um, biggest thing, we want you to accomplish your goals. If you want to take a cruise, a two-week cruise, then you should go ahead and book it. Book it for June or July or August. Go ahead and book it. Okay. Um, I would personally, uh, I, I, I love open financing. I think it's a great extra strategy if, if you can't sell the property traditionally. You're going to get the biggest bang for your buck by selling the, the property traditionally. I don't like selling houses on under financing unless it's in a, in a rougher market, things like that, especially in New Jersey when you've got a longer foreclosure time frame. If it's in New Jersey, I would be selling that thing traditionally. I would not be under financing it. Okay. Um, so solidify resources, distressed property in South New Jersey market. Look, one of the things you got to realize too, Brandon, it's great if you're up that neck of the woods, but the whole country is your market. There's a lot of great markets out there. So I would be looking more for distressed assets, especially if you're in the note business, looking for notes, 
sources outside of New Jersey because Jer Jersey's still a longer foreclosure process. But hey, those are great, great things to start off with. I would love for you to focus those down a little bit because the more you can get focused on specific numbers, th those are going to help you more than anything else. Specific specificity will help you stay committed. Um, but Julian says, one of my goals will be to attend the Quest Expo, meet some of the WCN crew in person. Awesome. Yeah, the Quest Expo this year is going to be taking place in Houston, Texas. It's August 23rd through the 25th. Um, we're going to be a part of it again. It's going to be a fun thing. It was great last year. They've expanded it to three days now, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, which we're excited to be a big part of that. And we'll be having our mastermind meet either before or after, probably the two days before that event. Okay. Anybody else got some goals that they're looking for in 2019? I'd love to hear if you, hey, I'm wanting to hit 60 note deals or I'm wanting to hit 50 note deals. Um, well, I want to double one of the big things with us buying assets. I want to double the amount of performing notes that we have on our portfolio. Really this year, um, we're really focused on a lot of performing paper for portfolio. Not that we're not the kings of non-performing. Uh, we are, but we really want to focus on getting things Reperforming or buying a little bit more so with the perform paper. We've used our IRA some in the past. We'll be using a lot of it this year uh, for long term goals on some things. Okay. One of the big things we want to focus on. And that's part of uh, raising the capital to be funding a lot of the stuff that we can take down and get reperforming quickly and have it on our portfolio. Um, but it's good to see everybody out there. Uh, I really, like I say, we want to be committed. All right, committed. Uh, we think that our training is some of the best in the industry. Our note buying blueprint is phenomenal, phenomenal note buying blueprint training. And so, if you're listening to this, and you haven't signed up for our note buying blueprint, do so. You cannot go wrong with it. It's a phenomenal training thing. Hey, buddy, speak of the devil. There's Stephen Epstein. Find some great notes to buy. Thanks for all the help this year. Hey, buddy, thank you, Stephen. Appreciate it, bud, as well. Thank you for all that you do, bud, help assisting us and as well as vice versa. Now here it says uh, January 23rd, 2019. That is on a Wednesday night, the Tampa Note and uh, Self-Directed IRA Meeple Meet Meeting. That's awesome. Good stuff, Now here. Looking forward to seeing that and rocking it out there. Uh, we're really proud of like, Eric Hyde, Chris Savigny, Nahir, just a few of the people that are doing specific note meetup groups. And it doesn't have to, not in the education side, just getting together, meeting, talking about the note business, you know, sharing resources, meet with the local investors. Um, Cody Cox has done this past, he did not, he didn't want it to turn into an a, a educational thing. He's just looking to connect and, and network with other people. I think a lot of people are looking to do that as well. So we're really proud of those that are out there doing that on a regular basis. But yeah, uh, had a little bit of festiveness here in the office. Uh, I had lights up beforehand. Um, it's the whole thing. I was in here last night for a few minutes, and when one light goes out, they all go out. <laughs> it's like I'm not going to pick through these. So I took the lights down last night. But we got the wreath up in the Santa Claus hat as well. It'll be a little festivus here. But uh, once again, everybody, big, big goals for us in 2019. Big goals for us. Um, we really believe 2019 is going to be a lot of changes taking place in the industry, and we may have to pivot. You know, you'd be prepared if you have to go for towards performing paper or non-performing. And a lot of people have been looking at owner financing no, or owner finance notes as part of buying distressed owner finance notes. I don't like using owner financing as a strategy for my properties unless, of course, it's the only strategy I have. It's a property that needs work or it's a property that's in a rougher area. If you can sell that property traditionally, cash or with traditional financing to somebody else, that's going to be your biggest bang for the buck. That's going to help you with a velocity of capital on a regular basis. Now, if you're, if we start seeing interest, interest rates climb up and the market fall again, stuff like that, we're going to see some people, we see some distressed assets out there. Markets, there's markets out there that are dropping, you know, prices reductions. People are overbuying assets. People that would have paid a 500 grand four months ago, those assets are now 450, 400. In different parts of the country so don't be surprised if we start seeing more distressed assets at the market because believe me i know they're out there when you look at what we see with people overpaying in markets like dallas and other parts of the country along with uh 
non-prime subprime loans but coming back in the picture again it's just a matter of time it's a almost another again perfect storm for us as debt investors to go out and buy some stuff and add us to our portfolio it really come and help as i like to say making america great one mortgage at a time so once again guys i want to thank everyone who's listened to the show who's left a review i really really appreciate it. if you would do if you have not left a, a review on itunes take a few minutes go do that for us it helps us out tremendously Thank you so much for those that have done that already. Uh, if you've shared the show, thank you so much. If you love the episodes, feel free to go ahead and hit that share button. You know, that helps us out. It helps up us, us grow our audience as well as helping, hopefully, um, help you expand and educate your audience as well out there. Um, you don't want to have to reinvent the wheel. Rely on us, lean on us to help you with educating your folks, your investors, your tribe out there for what really no investing is. So because as, well as we see itself, we are the premier podcast and note investing out there. Um, not that there's not others that are good out there, great ones that just, hey, when you've got 340 some odd episodes, 360 plus episodes, we keep rocking. And as long as we keep rocking, you can believe that door will be a knocking. <laughs> Whatever. Got that quote all wrong. But anyway, please share the show. As always, feel free to like and follow us on Facebook, uh, Instagram, under the Note Closer Show. And as always, feel free to check out the website, weclosenotes.com, um, our main website there, along with catching all of the past episodes on our blog website there, or blog, I should say, uh, tab. So as always, once again, thank you so much for uh, being a part of 2018 for us. Thank you for tuning in. If this is the first time you've listened to the podcast, hey, we just got the top 10 episodes for you to listen to out there for you. So, uh, But once again, everybody, go out, make something happen. Uh, be safe this New Year's Eve. Don't drink too much. It's okay to have some. But what I want to do with all of you is share a little champagne with you all before the year is out. So. Please go out, be safe, have fun. We'll see you all at the top, everybody. Bye.